So that was an Allegro, number 32 from Giuliani's Opus 50. And uh, follow the lesson for free. We'll be talking about this piece a little bit and doing a walkthrough. But if you're interested, I do have an edition of all 32 works in Giuliani's Opus 50. And there's a link for that in the description. So we've uh, finally ar arrived at the final piece, number 32. And it's it's like a nice little, almost Mozartian little, little work. And a few challenges in the piece for sure. Nothing too crazy, but it does navigate the guitar a little bit more than the other the other ones, and, and there is an extended um, bar chord and upper position work to, to cover. So I don't have too much to say. Uh, play the melody on its own. Uh, I, you can close it or play it open. So just keep that melody really prominent. You know, most of the bass notes are actually open strings in this piece, making it significantly um, easier in that in that regard but there's still lots of um, um, kind of more precise uh, polishing work to do with the little grace notes and the 16th notes so nevertheless practice the melody on its own and get the shape and contour and phrasing that you want and then add in the rest of the notes and see if you can keep that melody nice and high quality so, but I think the main thing to do here is just to do a walk through the piece and just talk about some of the oddities, oddities in the work. Um, I do the whole first two measures with the bar chord. Um, I just find it's easier to kind of just lock in to that shape. I'll go quite a bit slower. So I close all those notes, so fret the E on the fifth string. then I release just because I'm about to do that shift to first position return you can add a slur there if you want or not and then it repeats itself uh, with that grace note by the way just like on the beat I've decided to play the entire section from measure 17 to like 23 or 24 all in um, a bar chord in the ninth position. Uh, it just works out really surprisingly well. I'm not sure if that's what Giuliani did, but um, there's no fingering on the original, so I'm assuming that's probably what he did because it works out well, but he might have navigated between different positions to accomplish this. I saw an opportunity to stay just locked in ninth position the whole time, and so I went with that fingering. You can experiment with other ones. This might not be what, what Giuliani did. shift down there so on that B open B and then you're back to to first position there not much to say about that section it's just a, an extended bar chord in the ninth position works out quite well I'm just using mainly I am the whole time throwing in the A when the jumps between the strings are a little bit um, wider so from that measure 24 there a bit of navigating to do here. So you just, yeah, I'm using my fourth finger as a guide finger the entire time, so my fourth finger really doesn't leave the first string. here so I can use one here so that fingering there you can use three or one it doesn't really matter as long as you get up to the B in a legato way I close the F 
open E, and then pretty much the same material. As always, I've been saying this a lot in all these Giuliani um, pieces, but if, if you can't reach, if you're feeling you can't reach that bass note, just make sure you're aligned properly because I can't play that chord if I'm even just slightly aligned, misaligned. I can't actually reach that chord, but if my, if my knuckles are nice and parallel and up close to the guitar, it's no problem, right? You can even have curvature in all the fingers. So just a slight misalignment and I can't even reach the note. So make sure that you really are well aligned in the left hand. So I hope you've enjoyed all 32 works in Giuliani's Opus 50. Um, it was a lot of work for me recording all of the videos, um, 32 pieces. Um, but you know what? Um, playing through an entire opus of works regardless of the level of works. Obviously these works are a little bit below my level, but um, nevertheless, some of them, you know, give me a little bit of a run for my money. I have to practice them. Um, but it's really, really healthy because in every collection, in every larger collection or opus, um, there's going to be a couple of works where you find some weak weaknesses in your own playing. You know, in, for me, some of the pieces with, um, with muting in the bass notes, I have to practice those. I'm not, you know, it's not my strong point to be muting in the basses. So it's really great because I might not enjoy every piece to the utmost, you know, level. I, I, I might not love every piece, but if, you, if you're doing it and you're going to play each one well, then you have to overcome whatever challenges appear in each texture that occurs in, in the collection. So for me, that's really that's really great. You know, it made me clean up some 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 of my playing and different techniques and different textures, and I think it's really great for students to do because it really forces you to explore those different techniques and different textures and just gets you out of your your comfort bubble. You know, you can you can always just choose pieces that play to your strengths, but sometimes it's it's really great to just play an entire opus and just make sure you actually are able to do everything. And it's really beneficial when you go on to the next collection or the next piece that you might work on and there's a similar texture. So I hope you enjoyed all those works. Really nice collection of pieces and so many of them. So um, I hope you enjoyed it.